This video and channel is sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. I'll add their link down in the description. Go check out all their styles and their many collections. Today I'm going to be speaking about the Inzerillo family, who in the 80s literally had a run for their lives out of Sicily. Back then, they had become the prey, and the Colionesi had become the hunters. <music> As anything in life, time heals all wounds, and the Inzerillos knowing this, little by little returned to Sicily. Naturally, after the caption arrest of Totorina on January 15, 1993, the Inzerillos were by no way saddened by this news. In essence, he was the person responsible of killing their family members and friends and uprooting them from Sicily. But a new light was shed on the Inzerillos after the caption arrest of Bernardo Provenzano on April 11, 2006, documents seized referenced the Inzerillo's return to Sicily, and investigators learned of renewed relations between Sicilian and American Cosa Nostra. That investigation also shed light on the link between the Gambino brothers, John and Joe, both captains in the Gambino family, and Francesco Inzerillo, who returned to Palamo, Sicily. Francesco is the brother of Salvatore Inzerillo, the Palamo boss who was killed in May of 1981 by the Colinesi. Meetings about Francesco Inzerillo's return to Sicily took place starting in 2003 in both Palamo and the United States. On November 26, 2003, Giovanni Nietzsche, who was the godson of Palamo boss Antonino Rotolo, and Nicola Mandela traveled to New York, where they met with Frank Cali, who at the time was just a Gambino captain, but one who was related to the Inzerillos through marriage. Nietzsche's true intentions was to take Cali's temperature, as to his true feelings on the Inzerillos. They returned to Sicily on the trip December 7. At that time, there was numerous documented trips from Sicily to the United States, as well as telephone calls. Calls were placed to Nino's, a restaurant in Staten Island, where Tall Pete Inzerillo would be waiting. Messages would be passed back and forth between Tall Pete, Frankie Cali, and the rest of the Inzerillo family. In 2004, Francesco's brother Rosario would also return to Sicily. They were making their way back little by little. News that the Inzerillos were slowly returning to Sicily made Antonino Rotolo uneasy. Rotolo, who was actually an underboss, sat on the Sicilian commission, but according to sources, he would represent his family. During the 80s, he was a loyal ally to the Colinesi, and like most members of Sicilian Cosa Nostra, he was very big into heroin trafficking. He was picked up on an intercepted call saying, these Inzerillos were children, and then they grew up. They are now 30 years old. How can we stay calm? They have to go away. They have to stay in America. And if they come back, we will kill them. Rotolo was adamantly opposed to the return of the Inzerillos. Both he and Salvatore Lo Piccolo were Bernardo Provenzano's top two bosses. Lo Piccolo was for the Inzerillos' return. And because of this, the two bosses were at odds. In fact, it became known that Rotolo planned to dispose of Lo Piccolo because of this disagreement. Members on both sides, either for or against the Inzerillo's return, began reaching out to Bernardo Provenzano in prison for him to make a decision. However, Provenzano was not making any quick resolution to this problem. The boss of Toretta, Vincenzo Brusca, brother of Giovanni Brusca, also wrote Provenzano expressing his concern in this matter. But it would be Le Piccolo who would strongly plead his cause, telling Provenzano he didn't want to lose faith with those close to the Americans. Obviously, he made some sort of promise. In the interim, Francesco Inzerillo moved himself out of Palamo to northern Italy. Once there, he met with Le Piccolo, who explained the issue was still a stalemate, and reiterated Rotolo's opposing their return. But all this would change starting June 20, 2006, when Antonino Rotolo was arrested. And this turn of events was followed by Le Piccolo's arrest on November 5, 2007. Le Piccolo would be found in possession of letters detailing the Inzerillo debate. In fact, eight letters were found discussing this matter, dating from 2004 to 2006. In one letter, Le Piccolo notifies Provenzano that besides Francesco Inzerillo, his brother, Rosario, who they call Sarino, returned to Sicily as well. 
Back in Sicily, the Inzerillos went to go see Vincenzo Marciano, boss of the Bocca di Falco family. They were seeking his approval to be in the region since he controlled it. In a letter back to La Piccolo, Provenzano asked for the names of those who wished to return. He also expressed his lack of faith in Marciano and stated that he didn't even know him. He said he didn't remember who told him, but he heard negative things about the Marciano brothers, and he was only repeating what he's heard. In his letters, La Piccolo greeted Provenzano with Dear Uncle. In another letter, La Piccolo wrote him about the commission decision regarding the Inzerillos made 25 years ago. He said many of those decision makers are no longer here. Then he expressed his disappointment in the state of Cosa Nostra and how it was almost ruined. He stated that the situation is sad because we don't know how to hide. La Piccolo understood what was once a secret society was no longer a secret. He watched how things changed for the worse. His push for the Anzarillos was an effort to bring in new young blood, but he also understood the concern of the remaining members. They feel the Anzarillos return would bring them power and possibly the desire to seek revenge. But he assured Provenzano, the boys who are here are under control and have already been warned. And he ended the letter by giving Provenzano a sign of respect. He told him any decision that he was to make would be on it. A letter from Provenzano to Rotolo is dated August 5th, 2005. And he writes, My dearest, I received news of you and I'm pleased to know you are in excellent help. Anyway, thank God. At the moment, I received two of your messages. I beg your pardon if I resume writing to you. I have the duty of informing you and copying what I'm saying. So I guess he was keeping his own notes on what he was saying to him. He continued, I had new prayers from the Marciano brothers. I sent them back to you. My ideas as new situations arise that deserve decisive answers and we could find an agreement altogether. And they can turn to me, as have you, as well as others, who also have the same titles as us. By titles, he means bosses, so he's trying to speak a little code. And where possible, we resolve things with everyone's responsibility in the strict moment of the three of you. It is up to you, me, and La Piccolo to decide this thing. Please give me the answer as soon as possible. He also mentions a request by Francesco Renzarillo for permission to return back to Palamo. They beg of us if we can do anything with the will of God, if there is God's will. We will do what can be done, and a very difficult thing, but the ways of the Lord. Provenzano was known to speak very religious in his later years. Ultimately, the Inzerillos were permitted re-entry back into Sicily. Aside from bringing new blood, they took along with them their connections to the Gambino family in New York. In Sicily, they were viewed as an asset for their ability to traffic narcotics. And they proved that theory right, as seen with Operation Old Bridge in 2008 and Operation New Connection in 2019. In 2017, the person who sent the Inzerillos into hiding, Totorina, died. And with his death, opened the floodgates for the remaining family members to return to their homeland. There's a lot more I have on this subject, and we'll get to them in other videos. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Please remember to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you could do that as well. If you think friends and family might enjoy it, please share it and thank you. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. I'll catch you on the next one. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.